Hi, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this Adobe Photoshop tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the Sharpen filters. So the first filter in the Sharpen folder is the Shake Reduction filter. This will work for when you have a photo where you might have shook the camera and it's caused some blur. To be honest, this is a pretty heavy example that's kind of almost a bit beyond full repair. But if I apply the Shake Reduction filter, you can see how it will try to find the original contrast and edges and sharpen things back up to more of a flat, sharp image again. So you have a few different options between the blur trace amount, the smoothing, amount of noise that it generates over top to blend things in. But if I press OK, you'll see that it does try to sharpen this image up. We do get a bit of a sharper image using the shake reduction tool. The less severe the shake, the better job you might be able to do to get the original sharpness and contrast back. The next effect we have is just the filter sharpen. It's just a one step click and it applies a little bit of sharpness around the edges and contrast. If I repeatedly apply that a couple times, you could see how it's trying to sharpen things up. Echoing something I said in the episode I did about noise, you don't always have to try to sharpen things and you don't always have to try to remove every little bit of noise. Sometimes it looks pretty good straight out of the camera. The other one, Sharpen More, is just like Sharpen. It's a one-step application, but it's just a little stronger than Sharpen. Next up, we have Sharpen Edges. This one will try to take into account the edges of the photo and sharpen those only areas where high contrast appears rather than just overall sharpening everything. So you can see if I do the Sharpen Edges repeatedly over and over, it's not really affecting a lot of these areas of the sky. It's only continually hitting on these areas of edge contrast that it finds, especially you see in this building area, it detects these as the edges. So if I just keep sharpening and cooking it, you see how it's sharpening these, but not the middle area of the shapes. Next up, we have Smart Sharpen. This is kind of like your powerful go-to sharpen tool if you don't need anything specific. This allows you to adjust a few different parameters. So you can zoom in to different areas that you're working with to get a look at what's going on. And you can increase the amount of sharpening. And then you can also increase or decrease the radius amount. So this is kind of taking into account the edges that Photoshop is detecting. And you can choose how far out of those edges you want. And you don't necessarily want to get too much of this haloing effect that happens where you see that black and white separation. You want to just slowly reduce the radius until you don't see that haloing anymore and then adjust the amount strength until you get your desired level of sharpness. There's also a couple other options like noise reduction and lens and motion blur removal as well. And you can also choose to sharpen just the shadows or just the highlights themselves and target those. So it's a bit more powerful than just your one step filter sharpen. And if you find a preset or setting that you really like for your batch of photos, you can always save that as a custom preset. And then whenever you're working with Smart Sharpen, you can always have that loaded in. So you have your settings for your certain camera or batch of photos that you are working with. Lastly, we have Unsharp Mask. This is similar again to a lot of these tools that are considering the edges of the photo. Just like Smart Sharpen, I can increase the amount, will increase the amount of strength, but the radius amount I can also increase. And you'll see if I go too far, we get this haloing happening. But I can bring that back just to the point where we don't have haloing. And then adjust the amount strength to be as sharp as I personally want. And you also have the threshold, which tells Photoshop what areas to consider the edges or not. So the lower I go, you see it's getting sharper. But the higher I go, the less areas are getting considered. Edge. So that's a brief introduction to everything in the Sharpen folder. It can help in certain problem areas and situations where you just want a little bit more sharpness out of a blurry area or photo. If you enjoyed this video, I'm going over every filter in Photoshop explained in this playlist on my channel. You can subscribe to stay tuned for all of my new videos. And in the next episode of this series, we're going to be going over the stylized effects. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.